Hey guys, it's Clockwork Music, and in today's video, we're going to be going over the story of Revolver. In these videos, we go through little quick stories just about the albums. So today's video, we're doing Revolver. Here's some quick info before we start. It was released on the 5th of August 1966 in the UK, and the 8th of August 1966 in the US. At this point in the Beatles' careers, they had stopped performing live and were arguably at their creative peak. Now they were free to experiment and record some of their most unique songs ever. It is often considered to be the group's finest body of work and showed all four members of the Beatles working together equally at their creative peak. So obviously you can see in the top corner we have got a quote there from Paul McCartney if you'd like to read it uh, about the album and uh, the track listing is there at the bottom. At the end we will be going through the track list and we'll be ranking them from best to worst. Revolver, the Beatles' seventh UK long player, was released on the 5th of August 1966 and three days later in the United States. It ushered in an era in which the group became increasingly interested in exploring production techniques in the studio. The album was released just before the Beatles' final US tour in August 1966. None of its songs, however, were performed live. The group considered many of the songs too complex and unsuitable for live performance, during a time in which they were often unable to hear themselves above the screams of the audience. Revolver was recorded at EMI Studios, Abbey Road, London. The Beatles considered recording it in America, but found EMI unwilling to put up the money required to do so. The Beatles' previous album, Rubber Soul, had seen them exploring R&B and folk stylings. Revolver took this further, bringing in influence such as Motown, classic Indian music and children's songs, in addition to orchestral instrumentation and elements of music concrete. Recording There were a few main sonic innovations on Revolver, the first of these was the use of the Artificial Double Tracking, or ADT. This was invented by EMI engineer Ken Townsend in April 1966, and involved linking two tape machines to create a double vocal track. Due to minute differences in playback, the two recordings would separate slightly, giving the effect of two voices when combined. ADT was used extensively on Revolver and quickly became an established pop production technique. John Lennon in particular was delighted with the invention, as he always found manually double tracking his vocals as a laborless process, and George Harrison reportedly told Townsend he should have been given a medal for creating it. The second key innovation was the use of backwards recording. This had been done on Paperback Writer and Rain. The backwards vocals which ended Rain were recorded on 14th of April 1966. The final remarkable innovation in Tomorrow Never Knows was John Lennon's voice. For the first half of the song, he manually double-tracked his vocals. For the song's second half, meanwhile, the Abbey Road engineers ran Lennon's voice through a revolving Leslie speaker, more commonly found inside Hammond organs. It can be heard from the line, Love is all, and love is everyone, onwards. A revolver was named after the motion of a vinyl record, as it was played, although there is an obvious double meaning which pleased the group. The Beatles had some trouble setting on a name. The original title was Abracadabra, but this was later discarded. Revolver was the second Beatles album after Rubber Soul to not feature the group's name on the front cover. The black and white artwork, which was done by Klaus Vormann, a musician and artist who the Beatles befriended in Hamburg. It was made up of partly pen drawings with collage sections, including photographs by Robert Whittaker and Robert Freeman. Whittaker also took the photograph on the rear of the LP. Vormann chose black and white in an act of rebellion against the brightly coloured psychedelic covers. The writing and recording of Tomorrow Never Knows was a clear indication of the Beatles' ongoing interest in drugs. While the group had been experimenting with them since their Hamburg days and had illusions in earlier songs such as She's a Woman and Day Tripper, Tomorrow Never Knows found them explicitly revealing to those who know about the discovery of LSD. However, it wasn't the only song to be inspired by drugs. She Said She Said was influenced by a conversation John Lennon had with actor Pete Fonda in America while both were on the acid. Dr. Robert was about a New York doctor with a reputation for administering amphetamines to patients. And Got To Get You Into My Life was described by Paul McCartney as an ode to pot. Chart Success Revolver was released in the UK on the 5th of August 1966 and on the 8th of August in the US. The album was an instant hit with record buying public. It topped the UK charts for 7 weeks from August 13, 1966 and spent a total of 34 weeks on the chart. Just one single was released from Revolver, the double A-side Eleanor Rigby and Yellow Submarine. It was issued in both the United Kingdom and the United States on the same day as Revolver. So on the left we have the track listing, a very very strong track listing, and this is my by far my favourite Beatles album ever. But there's my ranking, 
Number one, here, there, and everywhere. Tomorrow never knows. I'm only sleeping. She said, she said. Eleanor Rigby. For no one. And your bird can sing. Good day, sunshine. Tax man. Yellow submarine. Love you too. I want to tell you. Got to get you into my life. And Dr. Robert. So that was my overview of the Revolver um, album. I got most of the information from the Beatles Bible, so I definitely go check them out, they're a great source, and I just do these videos just so you don't have to read through loads of endless information about the albums, and I just pop it into one video just so you can enjoy it and have a look at all the info. So if you'd like to see any any other videos, then just let me know in the comments down below, and let me know your favourite song on the album and your least favourite song on the album. So thank you for watching, and I will see you soon.